Eastern Ohio is largely rural, quiet, and marked with pockets of poverty. But a rapid influx of energy dollars is changing the landscape. Appalachian Ohio has traditionally been, without a doubt, the poorest portion of the state. We've been home to extractive industry. This is our third time around, I guess. First was timber, and, and they came and pretty much took the trees and took the money and left. Then was coal, and they came and they took the coal and they took the money and left. Now we're into this round of natural gas and natural gas liquids and oil production. What we need to do is be thinking long term and looking at how the dollars created by this extractive industry can be utilized to create sustainable industry for Appalachian Ohio, or we'll end up like we did the last two times. This is, I think, our last shot to, to turn that around. In the eastern part of the state, Carroll County sits in the epicenter of Ohio's energy boom. There'll probably be up to a thousand wells drilled in Carroll County. A friend of uh, the village administrator at one point had laid a check on his desk that was like a million dollars. And he's like, I, I never thought in my life I would see a check for that. Astronomical, almost incomprehensible amounts of money. Representative Johnson was here in the county and he said everybody in Washington knows about Carroll County because of the oil boom. And he said that he thought our county zip code would be the richest zip code in the United States. The money comes in two forms, a one-time signing bonus and monthly royalty checks. A bonus check is what you get for signing the lease. If you were one of the later lessors and you own 200 acres, you got a check for a million dollars just to sign the lease. Then it depends on how good of a negotiator you were. You either got 20% gross royalties or you got 18 to 20% net royalties. I have seen royalty payments that are averaging between $900 and $1,100 per acre per month. So if you're looking at a 200 acre farm, that's at least a couple hundred thousand dollars a month in royalty payments. I can't imagine what it's like. You know, somebody who's gotten up at three o'clock every morning, seven days a week to go milk cows, and then milks them again in the evening, who maybe is making 40,000 bucks a year, suddenly is making several hundred thousand dollars a month. The fascinating thing to me is they haven't quit farming. I'm seeing lots of farms being revitalized, work being done on barns and new roofs, and I think there's just optimism again in the community. The road to riches begins with a knock on the door. A landman is the person who comes in and talks with the landowner about leasing their mineral rights. They are obviously looking out for the oil company, not for the landowner. So you want to make sure that an attorney has checked out your um, lease to make sure you as a landowner are protected. Before any offers are made, one important thing needs to find. Who owns the mineral rights? That's made this building the hot spot of Carroll County. We still have about 30 to 40 people on a daily basis running title searches in our courthouse. We have a lot of title abstractors that have come in to do title searches, especially for the oil and gas leases. Some of these individuals have been here, I'd say two years plus. Uh, they work here every day in the offices. The revenue has definitely tripled. Last year, we had revenue of $841,000. Soaring revenue has become a common theme in Carroll County. I had a gentleman from Louisiana here who follows the booms. It's a construction company. He was a good old boy, he had a beard down to about here, bib overalls, great guy. And he finally looked at me and said, you all don't know what's fixing to happen here. And he was right. The days in in Carrollton is full. 
pretty much 100% of the time. And that's because of the oil and gas industry coming into this community. I stop every morning at Speedway and get a cup of coffee and two donuts. They've had to hire three more people on the morning shift just to keep up because all the guys from the oil fields stop every morning and do the same thing. Almost all the restaurants have help wanted signs up. There's a huge amount of money being thrown into the local economy. We have jobs being created every day. We have companies moving here. Our sales tax collections are up about 40%. So, you know, everybody's business is up. The energy companies try to do business with local people and they had a gentleman who runs a fencing company who was giving them quotes and he was giving them quotes and feet because that's what he does and their response to him was, wait a minute, we're not talking about feet, we're talking about miles. Suddenly, small local businesses are being asked to think big and big opportunities mean some unlikely visitors have come calling. I had a gentleman call from New York City and he asked if he could come down and look around. And his first question was, can I land my Gulfstream 5 at your airport? So I had to call the airport and see. Um, so this gentleman got off his $32 million jet in his $6,000 Armani suit and went into culture shock, I'm sure. It's like, oh my God, there's a tree. And the thing that was most interesting was he said they were on final approach they couldn't abort the landing and there were two deer on the runway. Energy is transforming the county, but some people have managed the transformation on their own terms. I came to Carroll County in 1971. I've been here 41 years. I came as a veterinarian. It's been an enjoyable life I've practiced. Carroll County is a beautiful county. Rolling hills, really a pastoral setting with cattle grazing on the hillsides and things like this. It's a nice place to live and raise a family. We had no idea there was ever going to be any oil or anything in Carroll County, or at least on our property. They drilled a well on our property. It's the third well I think they drilled in the county. There's a, a lot of money involved, and I'm pretty far in life. It's not going to change my lifestyle very much. I'm looking to invest, and I have 12 grandkids, and mine's going to be for the next generation or two. Large landowners are making the most money, but even people in town are getting a share. Chesapeake went door to door and leased quarter acre lots. I own a half an acre, which is my yard. They came and knocked on the door and said, we'll write you a check for $3,000 to lease your half acre. If they drill, between four and 500 bucks a month in royalty payments. Off, off my yard. But even supporters of drilling recognize that the energy boom brings its own set of challenges. Now there's a tremendous amount of truck traffic in town. The second thing is, because of the influx of people needing housing, it's increased the cost of rental property. It's almost doubled in price. You've displaced people who've lived here 20 years and have a what we may call a moderate income job. They're displaced. They can't find a place to live. Communities need to make a real conscious decision as to how they're going to deal with that. For some people, heavy traffic and high rent are the least of their concerns. At the top of their lists is the method of extraction, hydraulic fracturing, commonly known as fracking. I've had a few people tell me that they have no intention of leasing their land. Uh, they have a deep-seated concern about the safety of fracking. Um, so yeah, there's a few. Uh, they're certainly in the minority. I really am comfortable with the process. Uh, it's not a new process. All of the wells that have been drilled in the state of Ohio since the 50s have been fracked in one form or another. And the fact that we are gonna have jobs for most of our community is huge. The wave of energy exploration engulfing Carroll County is now lapping at the Morgan County line. Good morning, OSU Extension, Morgan County. Chris speaking. Good morning, how you doing today? Um, you're asking about that well just across the county line over there in uh, Noble County. ODNR um, has recently released some of the initial production reports on that. 
They're starting to drill wells now on the northern and eastern sides of Morgan County. And as those wells come online, if we find out that there's more oil in those wells, then I expect it to start hitting Morgan County sometime soon. The word on the street, everybody you talk to, what do you heard? Uh, what's going on with the, the leasing and the drilling and, uh, and what have you heard? And I just tell people what I know and sometimes I don't know as much as I'd like to know. But it's brought a real excitement to the community. Part of the excitement is because Morgan County could use the additional revenue. We're uh, the only county in the state, to my knowledge, that does not have a four-lane highway. Uh, we're one of two counties that has one high school that serves the whole county. But the population of this county is not controlled by the almighty dollar. Now, not that it don't speak, because money does talk. Uh, but as, as a general rule, people live here because they like the ruralness. I think to myself, you know, boy, what could I do with all of this money? And then I kind of wake up in the middle of the night dreaming that suddenly there's dump trucks and all these rigs and dozers going up my driveway to put in a well. That's the battle that I have. I almost wish at times that I'm never approached so I don't have to make that decision. Morton County has a fairly large number of uh, people in poverty. Five or ten years from now, I would like to see everybody's quality of life better than what it is now. If this new oil boom comes along, I think that's something we can make happen. Carroll County, Morgan County. For all of Appalachian, Ohio, the challenges and opportunities are similar. We all have an obligation to figure out how we retain those dollars here, how we attract sustainable industry, how we deal with the fact that it is going to go away just like the timber did, just like the coal did. The population of Appalachia and Ohio as a whole is getting older and older every year because the kids can't find any way to make a living here. We've got to turn that around. The last thing we want to see is 20 years from now, a bunch of empty ghost towns. We've got to come up with a, a successful strategy to not let that occur.